Everybody say hi to Kelsey. Hi. Take it away, miss. All right, this one's called Poker. Basically turning U.S. Middle East relations into a card game, so let's go. <laughs> when they were kids, they played games like war, one card for one more, until they got bored. So they changed the game's name to something less explicit so it could be hidden from the masses, just like a sympathetic fog that surfaces over glasses during a speech about a nationalist to hide the fact that he was a soldier who valiantly died for his craftsmanship as an Abu Ghraib mechanic. But don't worry, his reputation is protected by the flag over his casket. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so I back up just a tad bit. So his boys grew up and up went the strategy, throwing around more chips just to up the ante, fancy cars, new table, old horse, different stable, and from what it appears, they're still talking the same bullshit, same game, different year. And look, here they are, sitting around a poker table, smoking Cuban cigars. But in international waters, they're all safe from the law. Table sticky with whiskey. U.S. ambassador sits fidgety in his chair, glancing at his hands here and there. He's the guy making secret deals and handshakes, fucking small dudes during bathroom breaks, trying to get the Pakistan man to cooperate. But the pack is divided between wanting military funding from this ally and the 80% of people who think we're bad guys. They gotta drop bombs from their own sky to keep the U.S. an ally. We're a damn hard customer to satisfy, although the Afghan insurgency, insurgency now ISIS sure did try, and they're doing what they can to get in on this hand. Because when the U.S. grabbed the FBI official by the wrist, asked him if he held crazy apes, the man said, go fish. So the, so the ambassador did, ripped his cards from his hand, fished until he depleted the whole pond, and now the fish are all gone. So we traveled upstream, Iraq, pick a team. I'm looking for crazy apes. Do you got what I need? No, said he. I'm only carrying these. Slapped two cards on the table that the U.S. mistook for WMDs. So we called BS. But it turns out, they're just threes. <laughs> the U.S. shouted at the men, I'm looking for crazy eights, but I'll take six through ten, because they're close to them, and I need some points to get. I'm not sure if I have one yet, he added under his breath. Sixes, sevens, nines, and tens. No, you're not eights, but we'll treat you like them. These actions may not have been in compliance with the rules of the game, but times are changing fast. There's no time to explain. It's not heresy if you heard it from the hearsay. You get no say. Oh, say, can you see? We will not leave. A rack sits in a dark corner in the back so long as he holds those crude black cards. He can play what the heck. The U.S. mines them from his hand like diamonds, took them and sold them so Texas could hold them. And a rack wants to fold, but it's beyond their control because with the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gives proof to the night that their oil is still there. The U.S. ain't going anywhere. Round after round they go on like this. Their families are worried sick they got a gambling problem, but they all insist they've got something to win. Return every weekend to match wits, just card games and bullshit. And now we're just catching the end of this round of hearts. Paxton Man clipped with so many bloody hearts this past round, he thought I was shooting the moon. This last time someone tried, tried that, those Soviet red guys, the whole solar system almost came down too. And so the men sit anxious and wait. This man's got but one card left to play, and he's looking to collect three more hearts on top of the scars. It's not looking good. See when they trade cards at the beginning? The Afghan has slipped the Queen of Spades, Osama, to the Pakistan military official. UBL signed his initials like a death wish with the spit of a pistol. Crystallizing towers, as if a permissible visual, to represent the destruction he witnessed under America's dismissal. And the residual effect cost America billions in debt, exposed the president as inept, heartless, and exempt. Let's not even mention the Geneva Convention tortures an extension of our God-given blessing to be above the law, but under God unite we stand to make you fall in the name of justice. Yeah. Coercive democracy for all. But then it wasn't working, and 10, 15 years went by, and everyone's burping up the taste of musty beer. Game is still lurking on 10, 15 fucking years. Pecks in and held his last card close to his chest. The American leered until the president's alternate, Obama, stepped in and said, Give it here! Ripped his cards from his hand. Queen of Spades, Pakistan, you had Osama, did you know he was here? He shook his head no as the cards were cleared. The men look at one another, scared but relieved for this bit of closure, and they couldn't help but ask, Does this mean the game's over? Hell no, the American laughed as he shuffled the deck. But the longer we play, the closer we'll get. <laughs>